Hello, welcome to the October 2015 Kuli Yoga Shala teacher feature. Uh, this month we are joined um, by Chrissy Kapoor, who is going to be teaching a new class um, starting in October, 10 a.m. Monday mornings in Studio B, Align and Flow. And she's here to tell us a little bit more uh, about that practice and also give you guys a chance to get to know her a little bit better. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. So that's a good transition point because you just moved here from Hawaii. I did. So maybe you could, um, we could start there and give people a little bit of sense of your journey personally into yoga and how you ended up uh, making the transition from there to here. How, how long has, were you living there? Uh, I was there for 11 years. Wow. So and how long have you been here now? It's like a couple of months? Or? Three months. So, have you adjusted yet? Uh, I'm still landing. I'm still really settling in and finding my flow here. Um, but it's really been great to drop into Kula and kind of find this, this community already so supportive. And, awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And I, I like that there's a Kula in Maui. There's a Kula in Jupiter. Yeah, so. I live close to Kula. <laughs> yeah, and there's a, a really strong Ohana. There's a really strong um, sense of community that I still have and I'm still very connected to in Maui. And, um, you know, just was such a huge um, influence on me, the magic and um, just really being able to be there for so long and um, connect with the natural world mm -hmm. and that's really influenced my practice and my teaching a lot. Did so, you start practicing in Hawaii? Or? Um, I, I had been practicing before um, since I was a teenager because okay. I transitioned to yoga from dance Okay. And um, but I really got serious about my practice in Hawaii. And um, and you can obviously correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to recall your background is more in the Anusara tradition, is that right? Yes. I, so I have a lot of training uh, in Anusara. In 2010, I received the Anusara Inspired License. Okay. Um, and I've studied with um, mostly Anusara teachers. That, that's another cool tradition since there's so much Anusara influence at Kula um, that it's... Uh, it's probably another thing that makes you, I would imagine, feel comfortable, just that, that sense of um, commonality and, and tradition. Um, although, obviously, there's a lot of different traditions present here. And so your practice that you're leading on Monday mornings, could you give people a sense of that? It's called a line and flow. And, and so we're literally debating the name up to, like, 30 seconds ago and trying to capture the spirit of something that um, has... A, a real sound alignment system that's very much emphasized, but also that it's a fluid movement practice. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so in in all of my classes, there's a, a, a really base foundation of therapeutic alignment. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something I'm really not going to compromise. Mm -hmm. um, because to me, that's where a lot of not only the physical healing of the practice comes in, but... Um, the healing of the subtler body, bodies as well and being able to tap into those energies. Um, but I'm, I've also, you know, I've been exploring um, the way that, you know, the body naturally wants to move and naturally wants to breathe mm -hmm. and to really make space for that and allow for that. And um, I, I feel that it, it offers a, a much um, uh, a much quicker pathway mm -hmm. to to really just you know tap into a more natural alignment because we can do alignment practices and it can become really rigid mm -hmm. and create more um, kind of sticky patterns mm -hmm. in the body and 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 kind of distract us from what we're actually doing which is beyond the asana beyond the physical practice so. yeah I love that you're you're tapping into both the the 
form and foundation, but also the freedom and intuition and, and the sense of exploration is what I'm getting from what you're saying. Mm -hmm. From a, for people watching that want to get a sense of like a, a like de how physically demanding is this practice on a scale of uh, one to ten. Well, that's a really tricky question. Um, I think people come to my class and they're often surprised um, how. Um, not how demanding it is, but how strong of a practice um, it calls for, because um, there's a, um, you know, to, to have that balance um, and to be able to open into these, these deeper levels, there is, you know, we really do need to build this strong, mm -hmm. aware container. Um, and I, I do spend a lot of time building that, and strengthening mm -hmm. that. So um, I, I don't know if I could put a number on it, right, right. and it'll change every class. But it's definitely like a dynamic, a strong practice. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the pace and the flow and the style kind of matches my energy. Mm -hmm. I feel that, like just from taking the class that I took with you, that it was. You know, I would call it, you know, strong but not fast, you know, and, and, and I, I love that. I love that it, because it really allowed more time to refine and explore and pay attention to the subtle details in each pose. And that's another way of building strength. I think so often we connect the idea of a, a challenging practice to going 100 miles per hour, and that just kind of becomes like, you know, sloppy and a, a little, we, get, we sweat, but we... There's like a workout without a work in. Right, and then we forget what we're even doing. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's going to be a strong practice. You are going to get a workout, but it's not a workout for me. It's not, I'm not teaching an exercise class. And that's the last part I wanted to kind of, you know, connect to you around is, so what is this all about for you? I know you spend a lot of time like in yoga philosophy and, um, you know, what is it that you really seek to bring as a, as, you know, a teacher, whatever word you, you feel comfortable using? What's the essence that you wish to bring forth? Um, for me, the most important thing is being able to create a space um, for somebody to really discover the teacher inside mm -hmm. and to really um, bring a deep level of meaning, not just to the practice, but like on a physical cellular level, you know, it's a really, it's really about um, embodying the principles of yoga, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what the asana is for me, and I hope to share that. And it's beautiful, and um, would You'd like to leave anybody with any like parting thoughts in terms of, um, you know, having a anything that you want to share to people that maybe are, are haven't spent as much time on this path as you. You know, the stuff that you've learned along the way that you'd like to pass on, as long as we're capturing it on video. Mm -hmm. um, just everything. Everything can be yoga. Everything is yoga. There's always an opportunity to um, be in connection and in relationship with the practice. And it just takes um, a moment of awareness and opening and, and um, feeling into that space, that, that inner teaching. That's beautiful. I, I really um, just want to like acknowledge, I love the way that you um, hold the intention so present and I really feel like you're centered in that seat of, of uh, calm and poise and power and it's beautiful I, I'm, I'm excited to have you here at Kula and, and um, you know for people to get to share in, in a lot of the insight that you've come to through your path and it's um, it's an honor here to have you here I hope you feel comfortable in the home thank you Scott it feels yeah. so good to be here sweet namaste